Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explain in details about cold extrusion process. In previous video, I already explaining about basic extrusion process and hot extrusion process. So let us start with the cold extrusion process. So basically, the extrusion process that will be considering as a metal is going to be a plastic flow by enclosing in its a uh, closed chamber and which the one side is opening with the die and it will be making a complicated shape or you can say your required shapes so the metal is usually treated as a plastic deformations of the materials at a sufficiently rapid rate it may be sometimes squeezed out of a hole into die in the process of the metal assume the opening provides in the die and comes out as a long strip with same cross sectional area as the die opening but in case of the cold extrusion process that will be having a different kind of shapes and complexity of the job and according to that we have divided into hot extrusion and cold extrusion process so in case of the extrusion process metal strip produce will be have a longitudinal grain flow now in this theory extrusions that will be divided into hot extrusion and cold extrusion process in case of the hot forward extrusion and backward extrusion that detailed theory i already explained in my previous video so just you can go through that so in this theory i only explaining about cold extrusion process so in case of the cold extrusion process first one is hooker extrusion hydrostatic extrusion third one is impact extrusion process and fourth one is cold extrusion forging process so let us start with the first one in case of the cold extrusion process so first theory hooker extrusion process so just you can see in this process that will be used as a down method so this is the figure and just you can see this is my die materials and according to complexity of the shape it will be manufactured so this black color that will be considering as a blank or you can say raw material is there and according to that shape i would like to select die and this ramp so by the application of downward movement with the help of ram this blank it will be going to be a plastic deform and converting into desired shape so just you can see into the another figure once you lower this ram with the application of the high amount of pressure so this blank it will be going to be a plastically deform in this kind of shape so whatever the complexity of the shape is being required just you can select such kind of shape of the die but this is the extruded product with the cold working so in the case of the cold extrusion process there is no heating is being done so just you can applying the force to the ram and this utilization of this die it will be having a permanent deformation or you can say plastic flow of the materials so it is used for producing small thin wall seamless tubes of aluminium and copper this is done into two stages first stage blank is converted into a cup kind of shapes in second stage the wall of the cup one thin and it is elongated so this process is direct extrusion process there is no any kind of heating so it will be called extrusion process in case of the hydrostatic extrusion this is a direct extrusion process but the pressure is applied to the metal blank on all sides to a fluid medium the fluids commonly used as a glycerin ethyl glycol mineral oils castor oil mixed with alcohol and many more very high pressures are used as a 1000 to 3000 megapascals relatively brittle materials can also be successfully extruded by these methods but in that case 
there will be the limitation with respect to the length of the job. Third one for cold extrusion that is the impact extrusion process just you can see this is my die material that will be the shape that I required. This is my extruded tube is there just it will be placed between a die and the punch just you can lower the punch. So, this extruded tubes it will be having a plastic flow or you can say permanent deformations according to the shape of the die and punch. So, in this process the punch descends with high velocity and strike in the center of the blank which is placed into the die. So, the impact load is being developing with the help of punch and it will be towards the die and in between punch and die that will be our extruded product and according to my shape required shape you can say of the die and the punch. The materials deforms and fills up the annular space between die and the punch flowing upwards. Before the use of the laminated plastic for manufacturing toothpaste, saving cream tubes etc these collapsible tubes containing paste wear and are still made by this process this process is actually a backward extrusion process because your extruded product and your applied force both are into opposite directions cold extrusion forging process so just you can see over there this is my die materials and this is my punch. The shape of the die and punch that will be depends upon my complexity of the job. And in between punch and die, this is my slag or you can say raw materials. And this is my ejector pin that will be used to eject the finished component. So, by lowering these punch towards the die materials, it will be having a desired shape and size. So, in case of the cold extrusion forging, forging means one kind of hammering with the help of punch towards the die materials. So, this is generally similar to the impact extrusion process, but there are two different processes. In this process, punch descends slowly, and second, the height of the extruded product is very short, and the side walls are much thicker than the thin wall products produced by the impact extrusion process. But in case of the cold, extrusion forging the side it will be having a thicker so in essence this process is one of the backward extrusion process because the opposite direction of the force is being applied and the extruded product after this the comparison between hot and cold extrusion process in case of the cold extrusion better surface finish and lack of oxide layers but in case of the hot extrusion process, the surface is coated with the oxide layers because in that case of the hot extrusion process, the scales is being formed and these scales it will be into the topmost surface of the product. So, these scales it will be deposited onto the outer surface that will be becoming a lower surface finish. Second, with respect to cold extrusion, good control of dimensional tolerance no machining or very little machining is required. So, if you want to make a dimensional accuracy of the components with the extrusion process, so just you can go for the cold extrusion process because there is no any kind of scaling is being there. But with respect to cold, that will be in case of the hot extrusion process, there is a less amount of dimensional accuracy because of the scaling. Cold extrusion process, the high production rate at low cost, fit for individual component productions. In case of the hot extrusion, high production rate, but the process fit for bulk material, not individual components. In case of the cold extrusions, improve the mechanical properties due to the strain hardening process. In case of hot, there is no requirement of the strain hardening because that will be above the recrystallization temperatures. In cold extrusion, tooling subjected to high stresses. In case of the hot, tooling subjected to high stresses as well as to high temperature. Tooling stresses are, however, lower than for the cold extrusion. 
in case of the cold extrusion lubrication is very much crucial for the plastic flow of the material in case of the hot extrusion lubrication is also crucial if if you like this then subscribe and share modi mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching